I finished one of my projects and here's how I did it. I bought this tray at DI, which is Deseret Industries here in Utah. It's kind of like Goodwill. And I used a piece of tracing paper and just laid it on the tray, outlined the area that I wanted my fabric to go in. I was going to cover some mat board. Here I am. I traced the little oval and now I'm tracing, drawing another line about a quarter inch in because I'm going to put down two mat boards. And so here I am penciling that in. We'll see how good I am at that. Oh, pretty darn good for eyeballing it. Yep. Okay, cutting it out. Yep, good to go in the tray. Okay. Oh, trim it up a little bit. Okay, now is my piece going to actually fit in that area? It does. Put it on the back of the mat board, trace around the oval, just using a colored pencil, one I have laying around for the grandkids, nothing fancy. Mat board was mat board I had, I think that was just blanks that I had laying around from other projects. You can get them at the hobby store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, any place that does matting. So here I am cutting out the pieces. This is going to be the larger piece for the back which I am going to cover with fabric. Highly suggest using this X-Acto knife, which has a curved handle. It's so much easier to use than a straight one. And it folds down so that little children aren't going to hurt themselves. Now I'm trimming off that quarter inch so I can cut the second mat. Trace around it again with just a pencil. And now cut it out. This is by mo no means a tutorial. This is just me showing you the wackadoodle way that I put my project together. I wanted to just use things that I had on hand, and, and so this worked really well. Okay, mat board cut. Yep, good to go. Here's my Santa. Take the same piece of tracing paper I used earlier, and used it to place my piece of mat board and draw a line around so that I can cut that out. Snip, snip, snip with the gingers. This is just plain old glue. It's not even Aileen's glue, it's just Elmer's glue. Put a little piece of, oh my gosh, I can't think of what that's called. It's not stuffing, it's flat. It's like interfacing, but but thicker. <laughs> Same thing, glue down the edges after I clipped them so that they would go around the curves, smash them down really well. Cover it with wax paper, put the tray on it because it was heavy while it's drying, set it aside. Here's my fabric. There's my little piece that I've got the tacky, tacky spray on. And so I'm just getting my fabric situated here. Looks like I could do a little bit better like centering things so you can actually see what I'm doing. And then this is me lacing. I watched Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, finish some of her flat folds. She has fabulous, fabulous tutorials. And so I watched those before I did this because I had never seen anybody stitch, you know, stitch a piece together to be able to frame it or finish it in any way, shape, or form. And so this is just me pulling this together and then pulling the ends around. And then I just folded everything up and tacked it because I don't care what it looks like on the back. I just want it so that it looks good on the front. I know I don't want any little puckers or little pokey edges and I don't want it loose. And so I just, I tacked everything down, stitched it, knotted it off, then put a new piece in for the other end. So we're good to go there. Stitch, stitch, stitch. It's kind of fun watching it and fast. Wish it had only taken five minutes to actually put together. I'm just using regular old, um, 
I think it's cotton thread. It's just kind of on the heavy side. Um, quilt thread. Figured that if it was strong enough to hold a quilt together, it was probably strong enough to hold this together since it's not going to have people pulling on it and jerking and trying to cover up and snuggle under it. And so put another piece of thread in and again laced it back and forth at an angle because I'm trying to pull those corners down around the curve and I don't want them to pucker and I want them to fit nice and tight along the edges. Just tightening things up as I go along. Kind of looks like I'm playing the strings, but I'm not. I'm just tightening them up so that they're taunt and keeping the fabric taunt on the front and that it's not pulling it too much and, and causing things to be scatty -womper. And again, just getting up to the end. Oh, ran out of thread, which I did twice during this. Oh, I'm also looking for a shorter needle because that needle was kind of on the long side and now that I'm up at the end I need a shorter needle to be able to maneuver back and forth with what little bit of thread I had left. Stitched it all together. Tied it off. Cut it. Good to go. So there I've got my Aileen's glue. So I'm running a gigantic bead of that around the edge. And then I flipped it over and there I go. Hi floss tubers, how are you doing today? Well, actually tonight where I'm living. Now, just in case you think I've gone diva on you, I haven't, but I wanted to let my granddaughter know, see, grandma wears the bling and glasses every single day. But I don't need them tonight, so I'll take them off. That's just for my granddaughter. She got me those for Christmas, and I know that she was wondering if I was wearing them. She said that Grandma had the blinginess glasses that anyone had, and so she knew I would love those the minute she saw them. I hope you've all had a great week. I've had a good week. Um, it's been busy, as usual. I've had work and church activities and trying to get stitching done, which... Sometimes I just think the stitching gods are against you, and that's kind of how my week was. But I do have a couple things to show you. Um, as far as stitching gods, though, let me tell you how that went. So my husband has a job that sometimes takes him on the road in the evenings, and so I went with him on Saturday night, last Saturday night, and we had to drive down to one of the other cities, and it takes, it's about three hours round trip. And so I thought, Okay, I'll go with you, we can spend some time together, and I can get some stitching done because I'll be trapped in the car with nothing else to distract me from. And so I went with him, I grabbed my bag of stuff that I usually pack around in the car thinking I've got it, and I brought my little table, so I had my little table so I could sit in the car and put my stuff on here, and I had my little stitching, stitching metal little magnet thing so that I wouldn't lose my needles, which I have a tendency to do. I usually stick them in my shirt and then I can't remember where I've put them. Had my little scissors, like I was, like I had everything together. And I thought, great, I've got these projects kitted up. I'll just take these with me. I even had a light. See? Ikea. That I could, that I clamp on the, the visor, the overhead visor, and then I can plug it into the little outlet thing that we have. And it has a super long cord. So I thought, I have got this all together and I'm going to have such a good time. So I get in the car with my little bag full of goodies. These ones I pulled out of my other purse that I've been hauling back and forth to work. And I get in the car and I go down there and it's like, oh, well, that one's empty other than a pair of glasses and a pair of scissors. Eh. And it does have some thread because at the last minute this week, do you remember the Santa? I'll show you the Santa with the little, oh, I didn't even bring the pattern in. It was the Santa with the sleigh. And I'll show you later. And at the last minute before I got done, because I was going to finish it this week, I decided that I wanted to see the sheep and the beard a little bit wider. So instead of having them stitched in one, I, I pulled them out and stitched them with two. So it was wider. And I must have lost my mind because I could have gotten a lot of other things done if I would have just let it go and just let it be my first 
first little, like I said, foray into linen. But so there I had that, but I, I didn't have my little sheep with me. Then I opened up this little bag, because you know I've got, I've got the five million little bags going. And I had gotten this right here with the cross stitch magazine. And I thought, oh, well, while I'm in the car, good little project. I'll just whip that up because I have the little picture. And I had the little threads, the little piece of fabric, a little felt. You know what? Three hours in the car, I should knock out a good portion of that. Guess what? No pattern. So I had all of the stuff except for the pattern. So that did not work well. I even had scissors and a needle in there. So, sorry for the sniffles. So, so that did not work out. So then I thought I will work on this which is the 100 Ways by Plum Street Sampler that I was working on last week. And here it is again, in case you didn't have a, didn't get to see that. Here, I've got stuff in my lap. See the little, I suppose there may be 100 Ways to Love. And so I had that in my cute little bag and I had the threads and I had my readers, and again, did not have the pattern because I left it in my purse. I'm gonna have to run a copy that's small enough to fit in this little bag so that when I pick this up, I can actually pick up the whole entire project. Not a problem, not a problem, right? Because I brought three projects. So, actually, I guess that would have been four. So then I pull out this little bag, which is my Glitter Village bag. And I'm thinking, yes, look, I've got thread. I have the pattern. I have my, my fabric, which is the, oh, here's a sticker came off of it. 32 count raw silver Belfast linen, which is very sparkly and fun. I had my photocopy so that I could mark it off as I went. And I've got it cut because I had cut off the tree to work on and I pinned it to the part of it. Anyway, so I've got everything together and I go and I can't stitch because I have the white and I have, I think it's four leaf clover. Because all the other ones, I forgot that I took them off of my ring because my mom bought me this cute little thing to try. I'm sure you've seen it, but she thought it would help keep me organized. So I put all my lovely flosses on here with the little needles and they were in sitting next to my chair. So that did not work out very well. But I did have the white and so I worked on the I was working on the chapel. So there's the there's the chapel. And this week, and I didn't think to take a picture of it because this is all new to me. And I don't, I'm not usually running around documenting my life. And so anyway, I got the chapel done and I had this a little bit of the snow done and I got the roof done. And I was right up here putting the steeple in and I got the steeple outlined to the white part where the white part is and then as I'm looking at it I realize that somewhere I have made a gigantic mistake because the steeple is like two stitches to the right and so it's like oh holy Hannah so I ended up having to frog the whole freaking thing so now I'm right back pretty much where I started I don't even remember if I might even be, be less than where I started because I made the mistake pretty far back and so here I am, still, still there with my little house. I'm sorry, my little church. So it was a, a little bit frustrating week when it came to projects. And so that trip was not very fruitful, but I did spend three hours with my hus uh, husband and had a little chat time and got to enjoy the drive. But yeah, apparently, yeah. Here's, what, here's what's left of my house because this was me unpicking it. So yes, five hours of housework equals this little pile of thread. 
which was kind of a, eh, not a grouchy thing, but a little dismaying thing because I feel like my stitch time is limited. And yeah, that was very frustrating. So hopefully this next week I will be able to work on getting the chapel done. So my goal for next week, I may not get the whole little trees and all that, but my goal is to have the chapel done on this. So tune back in. We'll see how that goes. Let's see. What else did I work on this week? Oh, I was watching Brenda and the Serial Stitcher. Um, it must have been two days ago in the evening while I was fixing dinner. And they talked about this sampler. And I will have to put the website that I went to get it at below. But isn't she cute? Isn't she cute? She has little feathers in her hand and she has a little fan and a rose. Anyway, it was very sweet and it's a free sampler. Um, I, the designer is was very kind to provide that and it's got a history with it. And I just, I thought it was very cute and a little bit different than anything that I had seen to this point. And that's not saying I've seen a lot because samplers are still a new thing to me. Um, so yeah. Check out the comments below and I will put in the website where it was because I absolutely just, it's gone out of my head. Big shock, right? I better start writing it down. Um, like my little board, my mom found that for me when we went to DI. It's just a little metal board, magnet board, and I thought, yay, look, I can put my little pictures on it. And it'll be a little bit easier to hold. So that's one thing to look at this week that was very fun. And I love watching Brenda and the Serial Stitcher. I probably give the Serial Stitcher a run for her money when it comes to projects that I've started and then not finished. But this is the other thing that I started this week and I got very little done on it. And that is Jacob's Stitch Along. Um, last week I was trying to decide what color to use. I was trying to decide whether to use white or whether to go um, alabaster linen, which is a very soft silvery gray. And then I had chosen this 3799 DMC floss. It's kind of a charcoal gray, and I thought that would look pretty together. And I decided to go with the linen. That is gray alabaster. Sorry, it's super wrinkly because I've been carting it around. Um found my little center and then realized that this would not be a project I would be starting in the center on. I would be starting in the corner because that's the piece I have. So counted out and started there and got the line in and totally, yeah, I don't know, just not sold on it. So that's how, yeah, just having a not, not very getting very far along in things this week. And so I am not, I don't think I'm going to continue with the gray, but I do have this piece that I'd forgotten that I had. And this is a piece of smoky white Belfast linen and see, see how it has the modeling in it. Oh, it's, I don't know where to hold that, that bright light. Anyway, I really like it. It's very pretty, kind of like smoke on white. And so I'm thinking I'm going to put the gray on that, the gray, the charcoal gray threads on that and stitch. So who knows? I am known for changing my mind 500 times. So that is one of my other goals this week. I have, I have fairly lofty goals every week. I don't always make them, but at least I'm shooting for something, right? And so I'm going to work on that. I would like to make some significant progress on this so that I don't feel like I'm playing catch up for the rest of the year on the stitch along. And I know that when summer comes, I will probably, uh, other things take my attention, like my garden. So we'll see how that goes. But that's, that's what I'm going to be working on this week is trying to get, get a good chunk of that corner done. So hopefully that will go well. Um, the other thing that I am working on is not even working on it. On, on the list of things to do 
is what another one of Jacob's. It's the Summer Kaleidoscope. And I was going to stitch it on white because I want something very bright, very, very summery, you know, summer colors. And I was thinking light and bright. And it's going to be fairly large. I think on 32 count linen, it says it's 24 inches. And so I had a piece of white linen that I was going to use. And I, I have big shock, right? I've changed my mind. Because I found this piece that I completely, a fabric that I forgot that I had gotten when we went up to Shepherd's Bush in Ogden. And it is a piece, I think it's called Peppermint. Peppermint, do I have Peppermint Pals? I don't know, I think it's Aqua. And the little ribbon doesn't say. But isn't that a lovely color? It's kind of sparkly, little mottled blue, and it reminds me of sky. And so I think I'm going to use this for the Jacob sampler. So this pattern on this fabric, and I want to do a kaleidoscope full of colors. Yeah, so it's going to just be me making it up as I go along. But I need to get a bigger piece because 24 inches is not going to fit on that little tiny piece. I'll have to save that one for some other fun little project. And so tomorrow we're going to go up to Shepherd's Bush and I, so I'm on the lookout for another piece of linen for this little project, but I'm not going to work on that anytime soon. I just need to get my fabric together because I still have to pull a pallet of threads. Um, this week, the one thing I did pull a pallet of threads for was I kitted up this. It's a Cricut collection pattern. Hopefully I do a better job kitting this up than I did when I went on my little car ride the other day. And it's called Walk in the Woods. And it's, it's part of the Cricut collection. I saw it stitched up at the, oh, what's it called? Needlework of America in Salt Lake City. It was on the wall and I just, I love it. I love the little bee and the moth and the bird and the nest and the feather. And it's in fun colors and I like purple. And so I'm going to, I, I, I got that kitted up. So I have my glasses in here and the pattern and where'd my linen go? It, I disappeared. <laughs> I thought I just had it sitting here. I did have it sitting here. I just don't remember what I did with it. It's just raw linen is what I got. Yeah, no clue. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Yeah, it's just raw linen. And so I'm going to put that on there, on there. So I thought that would go good with those colors. It's got like golds and like a khaki green and some purple plummy colors. So yeah, hopefully that'll be a good pattern. Then the other thing that I decided, because I was going to start on this and remember what's in Pink Sparkle Bay from last week. This is a Mirabella pattern. It's the Sleeping Princess. And I got the recommended beach walk. It's green, kind of a green color. And, you know, I thought when I got it that I could like it, and I've tried. I do like it. I don't like it on this, and I don't know why. But there's just something about it. Maybe it's the orange. Not a huge fan of orange. And so there's something about the orange and the green that's just just not sitting right with me. So I'm going to be changing the fabric. And so tomorrow when we go to Shepherd's Bush, I am also looking for a piece of linen for this. So it's kind of a, I felt like I was spinning my wheels all week when it came to stitching. I just, it just was not a very productive, productive week. As far as that is concerned, I did get, I'll show you a picture. It has nothing to do with stitches, but I have some plates that were my grandmother's, my grandmother's and my, maybe my great grandmother's. And I had wanted to, to display them so I could enjoy them. And I also had this old farm door, gigantic farm door, I think it's six or seven feet long, that had hung on the wall in my mom's house while I was growing up and she always had like old kitchen tools hanging on it. 
and it was very fun and I loved it because the door came from a friend's farm. So the door was old. I mean, he was in his 70s when I was a teenager and the barn had been there when he had bought the property. And so when he was tearing it down and fixing things up, he asked my mom if she wanted the door and she took it. So the door is whatever, you know, it was old before she got it. I'm now 55. So it's an old door. Anyway, I nailed all of the, I put plate hangers on the back of the plates this week and I put them up on the door and I'll put a picture in here just because it's just kind of fun. And it's, I just love it because it reminds me of my grandmothers and my mom and um, Brother Zimmerman. Like it's just got some history that means a lot to me. And so I finally got that up because it's big and unwieldy and I could not do it myself. So that project got done. And then my mother made me this little cushion which it kind of reminds me of those little king cushions, like where you stitch the square and then you stitch the other square and then you stitch them together kind of off center. And it was a pill, but she made it so that I could rest my arm on it while I'm stitching because I have so many problems with my arms. And so that has been a very handy little thing for me. And so it is next to my chair and I took it with me in the car, big shock. And then the other things that I have is I still can't get my mom to come on because she doesn't want to come on. I told her that we could get her a mask. We could, you know, like a, a Mardi Gras mask if, if, if she wants to not be seen because I'm not putting a bag over my mom's head. But some of the things that she got done this week is this Stacy Nash Primitive. It's the Deck the Halls. And we thought, we thought it was very fun because, see that little teeny tiny dog right there? We thought it looked like my mom's chihuahua. And so she stitched that. And so we're, she hasn't decided what she's going to do with it. But here it is. I didn't iron it, sorry. But isn't that cute? Very cute, very fun, very fun little project. And so that she got finished. And then the other thing, she actually got three finished, but we could not find the, the firehouse. And so the other one, I just had the pattern to it. What did I do with it? I really was organized. I thought I'd stuck it all in one spot. because it fell on the floor when I picked it up. So this she got, she got these Lizzie Cates. This is the winter one. I love it because it has a cardinal on it and I love winter. I guess it's a byproduct of growing up in Wisconsin. And then there's all four of them that you can get. And so she got all of those because she has this really fun idea on how to finish them. That we'll have to, hopefully we'll get it done this week so we can show you and this is this is this is her finished project isn't that sweet very very fun she stitched it on fabric that we dyed that turned out very fun we tea tea and coffeeed coffee stained it in in the kitchen and then she stitched this cute little thing and next week hopefully we'll have it have it done and put in the fun thing that we found at DI that when we saw it, she saw it actually first. And she's like, don't, what would you think if I did this with this? So tune in for that project because it really is a fun little project. So that is what my mother is up to. And there was something else that I was going to tell you and I don't remember what. I can tell you what my projects are for this next week. I told you that I want to work on my stitch along and I want to work on getting my chapel done. Those are two things that I had planned. And then the other thing that I have planned is I got this pattern. I got this back in October, I think, because I saw it and I just loved it. And I thought, oh, I think that would be so fun for Valentine's Day. Wouldn't that be very fun? 
And so, and I even have a picture frame that I want to put it in. And so I got this piece of, and I had, yeah, big shock. I haven't decided. I really wanted it on red. I wanted to do a white heart on red fabric, but I have had zero luck finding a piece of red linen that I love. And I tried dyeing one. I think I showed it to you in the last video. And it's red, but it's not that like deep ruby red that I really would like to have. And so I thought maybe instead of doing a white heart on the red linen, that instead I could do a red heart on black linen. What do we think? And then I have a picture frame already picked out for it. So that's what I would really like to work on this week is getting this started and my stitch along and getting the chapel done because I would just like to see that cute little thing done. I really like those little glitter village by cottage needlework. And then the other thing that I, I even have my, I even have made the copy so that I can mark it off as I go along because I like to do that. It helps me keep my place hopefully better than the glitter cottage. And then the other thing is I decided that I was going to start finishing some of the things that I showed you last week that I'd had in my box for forever and a day. And one of them was this, which used to be in a frame. It was the very first one that I had done, just a little needlework thing. And so I'm gonna get that framed up this week so I can hang it on my gigantic wall. Cause I have a very bare wall in the little stitch room. And then this is the other thing that I want to frame and I don't know who made it. I didn't stitch it. My mom stitched it a long time ago for my son, whose name is Daniel. And I don't know why it didn't end up at his house. Maybe because I never framed it. Who knows, maybe he'll come back and claim it. Because it's really dang cute. I mean, look, his little beard and hair are all kinds of little teeny tiny French knots. He's just cute. And his little satin stitch, yeah. He's just cute. So I hope to get those two things framed up this week. And then do you remember the Santa and the, the sheep from last week? That I actually finished. And I've got it sitting over here. And like I said, I'm sorry, I did not grab the pattern before I came back in here. I do know that it's stitched on Belfast Linen, Stormy Night. 32 count and I got it at Shepherd's Bush. And I found this tray at DI, which is like Goodwill or St. Vincent's. I don't know what everybody has in their area. And I hope it doesn't fall out because it's been, it's been drying. It took me this afternoon to get it done after I got off work. And this is what I did with my little Santa and this, the, his sleigh. And see, didn't he turn out cute? I just, I love that pattern. I don't ever want to restitch the sheep again or his beard, but you know, for a first linen project, I think that that's, I think I did okay. See? And I like old things. So the fact that this is a tarnished old tray just really, really appealed to me. And I actually have two because one is this size and then one is a little bit larger. And I got them for like, I think I got them for four bucks for this, for the set. So isn't that cute? Very, very fun. And I'll show you how I put it together in, I think, I think I taped it. You know, it's been kind of a long day. I started taping it this morning and I, I think that I have the steps that I did there. Whoops, see, it is falling. It's not quite dry. So. Hopefully the next time you see this, it will be hanging on the wall above our chairs in the stitch room. We call it the stitch studio. And maybe we'll do a tour of that one day because that's just kind of a fun little space. Yeah. When my mom was coming out here last, when we talked about her coming out here last summer, we kind of did a huge makeup, shake up, shake up of the house because, uh, yeah, I moved. My husband and I out of the master bedroom down the hallway and then I laid flooring in there which was a learning project for me 
Um, we had done it downstairs, but I did the upstairs by myself. And that was quite a bit of flooring because I think the room's like 17 by 23. And then it has a closet that we call the Harry Potter closet and it's 10 by 12. And so I took us out of the master bedroom and put in chairs and a refrigerator and it's got all our sewing machine stuff in there. And then I put her bed in the closet because it's right next to the bathroom and it's the size of a lot of bedrooms. And so that is something that, yeah, everything got, got shaken up this summer. And then after we did started that project and got that done, sorry, my husband just walked in. He's like, I, apparently I forgot to put a sign up for something. Um, she wasn't, my mom was gonna move into our basement, which we were in the process of putting a bathroom in and a kitchen. And then my daughter ended up moving in for, yeah, yeah. it was just an interesting summer. So my daughter moved into the basement my mother moved into the master bedroom. My husband and I moved, ah, moved down the hallway. Sorry, see, it really wasn't dry, and I'm going to have to figure out. Yeah, I should have let it dry. Sorry, it wasn't quite dry. Um, yeah, so we just had a, a lot of moving around. But anyway, I have a gigantic wall in there that has needs to have fun stitchy stuff on it. And so that's where I'm going to put my projects. And... I think that's it. Um, goals for the week or things that I'm trying to, like I said, I'm trying to use, use this as a motivational tool for me getting things done. So I'm going to work on my stitch along with Jacob. I'm going to work on the chapel and get the chapel done out of the Glitter Village. The other thing that I want to do is I had this fun little thing and I think I showed you this last week. It was the little perpetual calendar, uh, Sam Sarah calendar which is so fun and if I don't get started it will be forever before it's done um, but I, I can't figure out how to cut the paper so I'm gonna have to find some YouTube videos on that and then practice a little bit so I can cut it out because this if I could get these cut ahead of time this would be something I could take back and forth to work fairly easy and not have to have giant pieces of fabric flying out of my purse all day. So I hope that everybody had a really good week and that you get lots of stitching done, way more than I got done this week. And hopefully I can come back next week and tell you what I've gotten done and show you more progress than I had this week. And I, if you like this and you've enjoyed listening to me and want to know a little bit more about what goes on for the next week, come back and see me. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe because you know what? It's like we're making this gigantic community of friends and I, yeah, I am very happy to be part of it and love listening to everybody. So see you next week. Happy stitching. Bye.